you know J.P. Sears is? He's, he's a, he, he was a self-help guy, a self-help guru, and also tells people like a life coach and things like that. And he used to, he, he, he uh, got his uh, big start is putting out YouTube videos about self-help and, you know, you know, make fun of yourself. But every now and then he'd make a sarcastic video, play this like hippie who tells people just to do the wrong things with their lives. Like the exact opposite, like to be ultra spiritual is, you know, always make sure to win an argument with your spouse. Like you'd say that. That's the thing. Like my good advice to you is, or whatever. He And he was kind of funny. Every now and then he, he'd be sarcastic and funny. He'd wear like his hippie outfit and do it. And uh, then he realized that he had to embrace his inner weirdness. He was making a lot of money. Uh, he got his big thing by becoming uh, a comedian, like actually just being sarcastic all the time. And you actually see the, the evolution of the man because that's how he discovered his wife and all that. And he became really what he is now. He works in stand-up comedy and basically does spoofs all the time, especially of modern politics, because uh, he was telling people to be independent. And he didn't like the fact that basically the whole China virus thing made it that everybody became in, dependent on government. Government basically came in and said, you know what, everybody's going to have to listen to us. It was like part of major political philosophy says is that government shouldn't be telling people what to do. It's just there to protect people from eating each other alive. Like how does Hazal imagine government? The king is supposed to enforce the law, uh, have uh, national self-defense, and uh, what is it? Uh, no, the king enforces the law, national self-defense, and also the governments that people don't eat each other. You know, mm. like like the same Pirkei but government is not supposed to do chesed. Government's not supposed to be in charge of your health. It's not meant to do that. But suddenly, all over the place, people became more controlling, and he became uh, much more outspoken in his politics. Why do I say this? Because sometimes just a little late sonus brings out a point very well. Uh, I thought the best point was made by an Israeli group here, uh, here in Israel. They're, they're Israelis. Obviously, an Israeli group here, and there's a bunch of Israelis. And uh, they also do spoofs. They actually came in here and did a show for two hours. I couldn't stand it. I told them, I got to get out of here. Too much sleep's on us. But they have, they're all Orthodox. They're all yeshiva, sort of trained, not, definitely not Haredi. Mm -hmm. But you know, you know, they've been where we have been. And they, they do their videos and their, and their music every now and then. It's all kosher. Although just the fact that it's late Sunday and too much of it, for Purim, it'd be, it'd be good. Like our Rabbi Salvation told us, dial up a shaita. It's enough that we do late Sunday and Purim. You, you have to be a little more serious. But every now and then, they can make a very good point through comedy. They have one skit that's like five minutes long about from cannibals. A family of from cannibals in Ramat Gan, wherever it might be, who are basically criticized by our community. Oh, shame on you for, you know, you're not, you're not good Jews and all that. And it's like, why? Why? We're just, we're just regular Jews like everybody else. We, you know... You don't sometimes speak a little Lushan horror or accidentally, you know, turn a light on Shabbos. So sometimes we eat people, you know, what's, what's the problem with that? We want demand acceptance. So the joke is made in the first 20 seconds. The rest of it is just overdone, you know, joke over, but they don't know how to, you know, they keep beating a dead horse. So that's funny. Why is it funny? Because that's the way we all behave. Every, every one of us has our favor, the thing we do. We're asking like, yeah, yeah, we're good for, except, you know, that, that time when I, you know, every now and then I have my vice and yeah, I say, I'll hate for on Yom Kippur. But really, how many of us are like that? And then there's some people who have the chutzpah to say that they be accepted as part of the Jewish community. And, you know, they want to be like that, even though they stand for Chil Shabbos. We are going to be Michal Shabbos no matter what. That was the thing, apparently, when my father was young or maybe when I was even young. Or we don't want to have to keep kashras, but we still want to be Jews and all that. We're still we're still just as Jewish. And now, you know, it's the alphabet people who are like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I might go to the Kiddush on Yom Kippur, but I'm still Jewish. No, you, you can't do that. You can't be proud of your sin. The difference, between, the difference between a good Jew and a not good Jew is the good Jew knows when he trips up and he's not proud of it. And he begs God for forgiveness and help not to do it again. And the sinner says, yeah, I sin. So what? Accept my sin. And I'm not going to be changing myself. And they make that point very well, just with a drop of late sonos, which is an amazing skill. So every now and then it's good to have someone who has comedic ability. You know, sometimes, it, like uh, I was told also, remember in Shakespeare, the, the bard, the jester, is the one who sometimes is the voice of wisdom. I think it's in King Lear. The jester's job is to be witty and get a laugh out of people, but also it makes them wise and able to make a point. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. If you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Israel, 
or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement. Please email us at office at machonchilo.org.